Um, Zack Snyder has a very distinctive visual style which carries across all of his work. How much room did that leave for you to innovate and develop your own? That's a great question. I think um, he the, the thing that's great about Zack is he has that visual style. He has that uh, distinctive characteristic, but he also lets us kind of riff. So um, he usually storyboards the majority of the film. We'll go out and we'll uh, shoot you know, basically shoot his boards um, on occasion, just as shooting goes, uh, there's an organic quality to it. So every once in a while we'll go, oh, it'd be cool if we looked this way and do a big, big, you know, uh, huge scopey shot. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, but again, the thing that's really good about him is he lets you riff and he kind of lets all departments riff a little bit and and um, uh, take it upon themselves to to make it their own. And so I think obviously there's certain things that are Zack Snyder, very Zack Snyder, like the slow-mo, but, um, you know, I enjoyed taking the opportunity to say, okay, this is your style, but we're going to amplify it by adding certain details to it. Um, you know, I, I, I think, uh, we really enjoyed doing that and, and I, I think it turned out really great. And uh, I got to applaud Zach for just kind of letting us go. And not only me as a, you know, the creative lead uh, as a visual effects supervisor, but, you know, all the facilities and all the artists were right behind it, too. All right. Uh, we have the next question from James Poole. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, watching this film, there are so many great eye-popping locales we get to visit. What was your favorite personally to work on in terms of location or planet? Oh, that's a good one. Um, oh, man. You know, I got to say Gondival. Gondival at the end of the third act, only because it took it took so long. And actually, if you if uh, I'm sure the materials will come out soon, but that was shot on a tiny little green screen stage it was actually segmented across multiple stages so um none of obviously all of that is a full digital build all the atmospherics is a full digital um effects past uh compositors worked a very long time to make those shots look the way they do and when it came you know when it was like yep those are done i was just super excited and uh super happy with that environment but all of them to an extent uh, you know and some of them are, are one-offs we have a uh, somewhere around the the count of about 38 environments, de depending on the complexities throughout the movie. Um, but I think that one's probably my favorite. All right, uh, next we have Isla. Hi, thanks again. Um, so I want to shift a little bit to the Oscar shortlist. So can you talk about, you know, when you when you found out what that was like, um, just, you know, your reaction to to all of that, because that's amazing. And congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I, I actually found out yesterday, uh, pretty much like everyone else did. Um, but uh, it was exciting because, you know, we'd worked so long. Um, I've been on the project for two and a half years now, projects, I say, because I'm working on the second movie as well, um, for two and a half years. And I was telling, like, I was telling Emily and Mia, too, for a while, we were working in a vacuum, right? No one had seen the movie. They were very, you know, uh, lock and key with the with the film. So I just, it, it's one of those moments where you know that you work so hard and everyone's worked so hard on the project and you know, you feel that the work is good, but you're not quite sure how the audience will react to it. Right. And so there was a little bit of um, nervousness to that before the movie released. But uh, when everyone just reacted so positively to the trailer, I was like, yeah, this is good. And then when we got the, um, when we got the announcement yesterday, I was just super proud and I kind of keep reminding myself, um, that the work speaks for itself, right? So um, I'm very proud of it. And uh, we had a great leader in Zach and uh, amazing artists across the globe did a fantastic job and really kind of got behind the I the ideas, um, you know, of what we wanted to accomplish, what those worlds were, um, the cinematography, which is very challenging just because, you know, it's, it's these one of a kind lenses. And so in order to make our shots look just like the practical photography, um, we had to do a lot of um, R&D and uh, a lot of uh, create a lot of tools 
to make that kind of pop and go hand in hand um, so it matched visually. All right, next up, uh, we have Navelle. Hey, Marcus, thank you so much for doing this with us today. I just saw that you guys had the uh, world premiere last week on the 13th at the TCL uh, Chinese Theater. I I just wanted to ask real quickly, as far as you attending that and just seeing everybody there, including the fans, how was that reaction to to everybody at that event? The energy was amazing there. It was so much fun. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was so much fun to see um, everyone react so positive uh, about the movie. And uh, I, I think one of my favorites, uh, favorite parts of it was seeing the cast because I'm out there when we're filming going, no, 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 you got to do it this way. Like, don't worry. Like, it's not going to, you're not going to have egg on your face. Like when you're touching the venue, like, trust me, it's going to look good. And you really got it. Like, and then explaining these characters that are really just like green screen heads or nothing right over there, you're going to see it. And, you know, Zach and I, obviously <clears throat> understand what that looks like in, in our minds, but no one else does. And to walk the cast through that um, is challenging sometimes. And they did a fantastic job. But when I got to see them, um, I'll, I'll specifically target uh, Sophia because I like looked at her and I smiled and she ran up and gave me a huge hug. She's like, oh my God, I, my mind's blown. How did you do this? Like, I don't understand. <clears throat> and she wanted to know all the technical details, which is great about Sophia because when we're out there, she's asking questions. She wants to know. She wants to understand it to better herself. And, um, you know, everybody else, too, like Stas was like, you blew my mind. I was like, I don't understand how you guys do what you do, but you did such an amazing job. I mean, you know, for Stas, he's sitting on this green screen buck um, in a parking lot in Los Angeles that's going that's swaying like this. And we're like, don't worry, we'll make it look cool. So to have them to have all the reactions from all of them to to just be so, you know, ecstatic about what um, the final um, film was awesome. All right, next up, we have Frederick. What's up, Marcus? Uh, first off, huge congratulations. Love the movie, watching it yesterday. Uh, I love film, and one of the big things about film is visual storytelling, and we go to a lot of different worlds in this movie. And I just want to ask you, how do you make worlds feel lived in? How does it feel to have like a history, culture, customs, and that look and feel? How do you create these worlds from scratch? That's a that's a great question. And I actually appreciate the question a lot because, you know, we work, I, I said it before, we kind of work in a vacuum, but also we, in order to get it to feel, in my, in my opinion, in, in order to make everything feel real, um, it's about what's the story behind this. So for the worlds, we talk a lot about when we're designing them and when, you know, the production designers are designing them. We talk a lot about, okay, where where is this? What is our inspiration? Um, where do these people come from? What are their values? And then in post-production, we take that and we just amplify it even more. So we have a lot of conversations and we talk about if in these worlds, if there's creatures that we have to design too, what are those creatures? What are their motivations, right? So it's not it, a lot of people think, oh, just digital, like you're just going to do it. But we actually take a lot of care into figuring out, you know, the background of those environments, um, what makes it feel real, what real world reference can we pull? You know, a lot of like atmospherics and like mood and lighting and composition, all those things factor in when we're designing those shots, just because we want it to we want it to be seamless. We want it to feel like, oh, yeah, you're you're planet to planet. But it won't go, oh, that's all digital. And part of that too is grounding, you know, grounding for this movie, grounding our cameras or even our digital cameras in uh, practical uh, constraints and making sure that they match the practical um, uh, cinematography and movement that uh, Zach uh, as the DP and director did such a fantastic job with. All right, thank you. Uh, we have Miguel. Uh, yeah, hi, thanks. Uh, congrats again. Like, uh, um, I, I, I'm interested in, in the in the multiple cuts of of the film. Of course, we know there's like a director's cut coming. Um, so, 
how was the, the work schedule uh, with uh, both cats like working on 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 the shorter version and, and the and then the longer was was it a case where you start uh, where you work on both simultaneously or you start with one and then move on to to the next like how was that so i'm not supposed to talk about entirely that but i can give you a little insight to it so we did start <clears throat> I talk about the filming actually because we shot 152 days 157 if you count you know my selfish days of shooting elements and stuff like that um and that was uh in itself a task and along the way we kind we tried to shoot as best we could in chronological order for both movies um and then towards the end of it we tacked on some additional scenes um but a lot of a lot of what um the part one cut is 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 uh derivative from the the mass of the amount of uh shooting days we had so um that's kind of all i can say right now but as far as a workload um we tried to do it in again chronological order and we've gone from one i'm currently finishing two um and then we'll be working on the extended cuts All right, next Sorry, up, I we... can't give you more, but... <laughs> That's okay, thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, next up, we have Mercedes. Hello, thank you for taking this time. The question that I have for you is really about the challenges that you faced. I'm really curious about what was the biggest challenge and also, how did you overcome it? Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Um... <laughs> I'll try to focus on like one challenge, but it's hard to. Filming was incredibly difficult. Filming that long was incredibly difficult. And the the um when we were in Velt, um the the shoot conditions were very difficult. It was sometimes it was 110 degrees out on in Velt, and we were there all day in the sun. Um, it was very gritty and dirty, which I absolutely love about our film, and I think it kind of sets it apart from you know, um, more, more clean aesthetics of, uh, like films. Um, but that also meant every day we're like picking dirt out of everything, washing our hair. Um, so the filming was difficult, but then from a post-production standpoint, it was a sheer amount of volume we had to get through. Um, and, uh, just the amount of shots, the amount of environments we had to create and the amount of creatures. So in, in segmenting that in my mind was difficult because you had to, I had to align in post-production while we're shooting. That was the other thing. Um, we were filming while we were turning shots over. So I'd actually, my days were very long. I'd get in the car at 6 a.m., uh, be driven to set. And while I'm being driven to set, I'd be turning over shots on my computer. I'd have a little like remote, you know, uh, Wi-Fi and be doing all that. I'd get to set and I'd film anywhere from 12 to 14 hour days, get back in the car and then do all the post through. So I'd work straight. Um, but the the seg segmentation of all the creatures and environments and making sure that we gave them enough time to explore a little bit early on so we could make them look absolutely fantastic um, when we needed to later on. So I hope I, I, I gave you a couple answers, but I hope that there's something in there that you could use. I think it's it's hard because it's not just one thing. It was just multiple things. I mean, we're also working on four movies right now. So. <laughs> oh, wow. No, that was great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Jenny. Um, I have a second question I'd love to ask, but I think Boris was in the queue before me. As you want. Oh, Jenny, do you want to go? And then Boris, oh, we, okay. have, we okay. still have time, so. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, I wanted to say in a world where video games look increasingly realistic and there's a big overlap in the way some effects are generated, how do you create something which still has that cinematic impact and makes people want to see something on a big screen? Oh, man. Um, lots of time, lots of effort, lots of care, lots of details. Um, I'm obsessive about details. You know, Zach, Zach will get in there sometimes and I'll be like, the shot, I'm, I'm not ready with it yet. And I'll show him the shot and I'll be like, it looks really good. And I'm like, but I'm not done with it yet. I wanna do this, this, and this. And he's like, great, go do it. Again, a great filmmaker will allow that to happen. Um, and it's the, the, the tiny details to me um, that really matter. Um, and, you know, we kind of have to push 
push the technology every single time. Um, I think a great example is, you know, when we when we started out in this film, it's like, okay, what's what's our palette? What do we want it to look like? We want, and I've said it in this interview, is like we want it to feel gritty, right, and dirty. And so, what does that mean? Okay, well, we absolutely loved Dune's dust, but can we, you know, and it's not a it's not a disrespect to them. It's like we love that, but we want to make it better. So how do we make it better? And so we had to push our our resources to the limits and get this really dirty gritty feel while also going you have to match this because we did practical dust plates with a helicopter for some of the first uh, dropship landing um and then you kind of have to meld together and just create that like i don't want to say cinematic realistic look um and again I, I think just grounding the cameras with the surrounding footage um, and also, like I talked about earlier, the optics that kind of gets in the next click, which, you know, I know some people don't love the shallow depth of field, but it's a choice. It's a creative choice. So I, I don't want to go and and have, you know, all these this practical footage of uh, our cast shot and then in between there do a crisp CG shot. It won't work. People are going to be like, that's digital. So, you know, I want to make sure there's subtlety, but a lot of detail to each of our shots. And that's kind of. Hopefully I answered your question without okay. saying a bit too much. Uh, all right, next up, I believe Boris, you have a question? Yes. Hi. How did you ensure that the visual effects complemented the storytelling without overshadowing the performances of the cast? Oh, that's Thank a you. great one. That's a great one. Um, I'll talk about Jimmy for a second because Jimmy's a great one where we kind of had to limit ourselves creatively, right? We could have done all this crazy stuff with Jimmy, but um, the history with Jimmy is interesting because we we started out very early. We designed, we had a, a bunch of design phases through it with our um, production designers, uh, Stephen and Stefan. And we, we kind of landed at a point where we got to make this because it's shooting soon. And so we pushed that over to Fractured Effects and they created that like beautiful chest plate and face plate. And then I talked to Zach and I said, well, you know, if Hopkins is gonna voice this, we should get him in an ADR booth, do some scratch tracks and give it to our performer so he can listen to it. And for me, that was really important because I've been in situations where you have a voice of one person and you have a performer of another and they never meld. And no matter what, your, your brain just knows and then it goes, that's not right. So we did that. We, uh, Dodie Dorn, our editor, created a, a, a quick like slap edit of that. And we gave it and we video recorded it as well, of course. And we gave it to Dustin, who was the Jimmy performer. And he went and studied it. And he really studied it. Like I thought he was just going to do it a couple times and have it. I could tell that he really studied it. Because when he first got on set in the suit, and the, again, the suit was the a beautiful head, a beautiful chest plate, and some shoulder plates. And he did the performance, but it was Anthony Hopkins. It was very, even for me, I was like, something's weird here, like in a good way, where he, I know that he studied it to the T and he kind of had the the right movements to complement Anthony's um, voice. And so when we got into post, I had a lot of discussions with Scanline who did the work. And I said, I, 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 I know how this is going to hurt, but I don't want to, if there's any, there's a majority of the shots that we can preserve the chest plate and the face plate. I want to do that because the lighting's so great on it, but also we don't need to skew from the performances. We don't need to make Jimmy a robot and robot movement. Dustin's performance is there and it's like beautiful. And that's where we had to limit ourselves creatively because we could have done so many other things. Right. But it's, we wanted to, you're like, Dustin's great. Anthony Hopkins' voice is great. What what do we do? And that's where we, you know, Sam and Eris at the river, where you have the subtle shift in his luminance of his, his eyes and they blush, right? And so we brought in subtle human characteristics that all of us could relate to, where you're like, Jimmy has soul now. He has, you know, he's a character that has soul. Um, and that's, and the, the same can be said with um, uh, Levitica as well. You know, Tony is an amazing performer and he did such a good job out there. And so we we did a facial capture with Tony, but I said, Tony's performance is there. We just have to complement it and retarget it to our creature. 
And like, those are what we want. And that's the, the, you know, the subtle um, movements in the lips or the eyes. And it's like, that's what the audience is going to relate to. And again, Levitica is amazing too, where he feels a little bit human there. So hopefully that answered your question. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. I think we have a, a, for a few more questions. James? Hi, Marcus. Um, one more for you. Um, one thing that really blew me away in this film was the um, use of the elements, such as, of course, that dirt and water and how tangible it looks. One scene in particular that blew me away was where Jimmy is washing himself in the river. Now, how did you accomplish that very convincing um, interaction between these fully CG characters and the elements? So with that scene in particular, um, it did, it, there was a moment where I'm like, ah, we, I think we're doing the right thing. And so I just let Dustin go, you know, we just let Dustin go, we had Zach direct Dustin. And when we got into post, I looked, I looked across it and I, there's only a handful of shots that we actually added to, had to do a water simulation back over just because some of the things would break, you know, he had, um, he had blue gloves and he had a version of his robot hand, but it, you know, there's no negative space in it. So there's, uh, you know, occlusions to the simulation or there's occlusions to the practical water that wouldn't be there. But the majority of those are really performances in, in situation um, with a couple of blends between digital and practical water. And then obviously the extensive, um, uh, paint work that needed to be that needed to happen for the uh, inner workings of Jimmy. Um, but again, I just kind of like the details, right? So if you look at those shots, that means not only I had to paint, we had to paint out what's behind him, but it's actually the reflections on the water as well. And so you have to paint him out on the water and then make sure his reflection plays correctly over the water, which, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of digital magic there. Um, but uh, th that's another scene where there's small details like, okay, the faceplate, keep the faceplate when we can. Or we had to, you know, in the blush moment, you had to replace the majority of the faceplate, but it said, like, keep the chin because there's a droplet that goes off the chin that catches light because it's backlit in the right way. And it has a specular highlight that like, I know we could replicate, but like, why would we? It's so beautiful the way it is. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, I think we have time for one more. Uh, Navelle? Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Um, just to piggyback off of what uh, Boris had had even had brought up, there was a question I had in there. What was the most challenging for you for, for the visual effects? Because I heard Jenna Malone's character was kind of a little bit difficult to get just right. Can you explain that process a little bit? Like, what do you what did you feel was the most that was the most effort for you to get? Uh in the film i i'd say that's ah, hard like it i want to say technically that was the most challenging because that was such a tricky obstacle and that was the scene that every single department was like and i said this already um but it's true is like every single department showed up and they're like i got you i got you and all of us were working like firing on all cylinders exactly the same time and that was a hard one because you got stunt performance, you got Duna's performance, you have Jenna's performance, you have the spider that's not there. So in my mind, I'm going, okay, where's the legs? Da, 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 and having to tell Cass, don't go over there. There's a leg over there. Oh, yeah, right. Um, and then just making sure that I have all the capture of the environment for the paintwork. So technically, that was very challenging. And I think for the Bennu, the Bennu took, Beatrice, the Bennu took the longest to get to where you where the final product is just because it took so long again this is small details right it's like the dirt and the feathers the iridescence mm -hmm. like and then the the environment itself is a very tricky environment because it's it's bright sunlight against a uh basically a big bounce board right so this the the sand is so bright that it bounces back up so some of the first a, a lot of the rent uh lighting renders came across and I was like, it's just not looking right. And so we had to push it a little left and right, if you will, to get it to sit in. And then of course the interaction between um, Stas, um, you know, was difficult too. And I have to say that the animation team did just an absolute 
bang up job um, and, and took my obnoxious notes in stride because it's like, there's so many good, I want to say like ticks in there, if you will, for, for Beatrice with the ear flicks and the eye darts and the peacocking, you know, and all those things added the believability. So um, that one probably was the most, took the longest, I'd say, which is a challenge in itself. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well, thank you all. I don't know how much time we have, but um, I really appreciate you coming on, asking the questions, being interested in the work. And um, also, hopefully you really enjoyed the movie. And if you did watch it again, I think I think there's a trailer for movie two on there. Okay, good. Worked little little preview to come, if you will.